like to pay them off for a and we learn about them over two faulty years. During that time, did they ever say anything about physical, sexual, any type of abuse issues with these children? Yeah, when we first got, when we first got them, we went over to the functionaries that had them You were told something about the previous foster parents. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. And those concerns have been reaffirmed by the caseworker, but there's minimal information, like mm -hmm. no details about who or when or. Do you know which child it was that had the particular prior concerns? Or, you know, I, know, or I know for sure they said that. that uh, the older one, Lily. I mean, like, I know for sure that being brought up. I don't know about the younger one, but I mean, these are not close to them. They had other foster parents like that close down, so I don't know. But there was allegations about this and happening, but I don't know. And that's what we're asking. What do you personally know? Because we're trying to get an understanding of uh, the background of these kids and, and your uh, interaction with them. What do you know about it? You know, that's really the that's it. You know. And then you know, how they came into your care and what you did. That's all. So that we can see that you know something that we don't know, you know, that we need to pursue. You know. um, as far as the day-to-day -day routine with the children, um, can you tell us a little bit about that? You know, who 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 basically cared for them throughout the day, who had the evening, that sort of thing. Joseph and I. All right. Now, during that time, did you work at all now? No, not right. I'm, I'm just going for right now. Okay. Well, uh, so, what is your schedule as far as you're going? Do you go to school online or do you... No, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're in school. All right. All right. So, primarily, would you consider yourself the, the primary caretaker for them or would you tell us? But primarily. Okay. Now, uh, if you know, can you tell us what Joseph's schedule is like? What is his schedule? He's on a rotation schedule. Okay. Um, like a 12 hour rotation schedule. Okay. He works overnight. So, I mean, but, uh, it's hard because, like, when he works home, he gets well, but the next week, you know what I'm saying? I'm familiar with that sort of rotation. Like, uh, I don't know how they play down there with the jail and, um, he works at the. Okay. So I work, you know, five days one week, two days the next. Is that pretty much how it goes? Something like that. It's a little bit different because it's an extra holiday month. So there's one week a month that he only works one day. Okay. Now, you were going to say you are still on certain days. Uh, you know, are there other things that take you out of the home? And if so, do you have to you know, take the children with you? Or do you have another way of, you know, caring for them when you have to go to school? Or if you're out of home every day, I don't know. I'm not clear if you're if you leave for you know, have those business on those other days or what? I I mean I, I do love. I'm always out of love, but the girls are always with me if I'm leaving the house, they were going with me. I mean, I've been born to share with me the girls are intended to be with me, the girls are intended to be with me. So if you go to school on Tuesday and Thursday, yes. and when you do that, do you go Joseph he works tonight or days? He works overnight. Overnight. So is your school during the day or evening time? It's during the day time. Okay. So if you are a school choosing a Thursday, you shall have another caregiver to watch the children or just watch them. Yeah, watch them. And then say the other days. Are you all almost walking up? Taking care of the kids or you have to go do other things and they're letting someone else's care? Mm -hmm. No, I'm mean, not going to do that. No, they but like, they have to Whenever I'm at home or about some of them, like generally they were pretty much with me. I mean, the only time they weren't with me, they had to do by the station with their grandmother. The reason, one reason why I was the line back then, I was told that uh, you went to school and that not only did you go to school, but uh, you also went to the school uh, regardless to get a class to study. And I didn't know if that was true. Like right? you went to the library today just to do work. No, 
predominantly, they were under in Joseph's care. They didn't have any daycare, so they had to go to uh, yeah. All right, in the, uh, I guess in the, in the week prior to the incident, they, um, had they interacted with anybody else besides yourself and Joseph? That very day? No, the week prior. The week prior. Leading up to the incident. Mm -hmm. Up to the same week out. So, yes, Ms. Watt is a case worker. Mm -hmm. uh, Millie had had um, involvement with their abuse, and yet she had a disclosure about some possible abuse, sexual abuse, and she, so they, she did things for Wednesday to her abuse of the sexual assault crime center in Hampton. Mm -hmm. And so Ms. White, myself, and Millie all had to go to that. And I don't know the this should have been around November 2nd. Yes, so, okay, so that's the two weeks prior. Okay, so a week prior. What's the date for that? The date this happened. It was the birthday and the date that this happened. I know that means the week prior, what was the start date of that? So it's around about, you know, this, if you could just give us around about seven, eight days prior to the you know, night. I mean, because it would have, I remember your family would have left me by the chair. They were, my just anniversary on November 11th. Um, and every year we go out with his family because they're also veterans. And so a lot of people go out to the for veterans on that day. So if we make his family then because I can eat for free, his mom can eat for free, his dad can eat for free. We all go out so the whole family and myself are out on, at all starting on November 11th. Okay, so okay. Uh, what I'm meaning is um, when you're with someone um, where you and Joseph work with. No, they didn't have time now. This is our whole set. Wednesday. Or at Tuesday. Oh, okay. it was on my birthday. Now, so the previous weekend. How did that sit right here on the road? Was that a weekend that there was a work or both of you guys home? We're both off the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Mm -hmm. The 13th, 14th, and 15th, we were all off in uh, the street at the end of the opening that weekend. We went to that the street um, gallery opening. Um, we also went out to eat that day. Uh, we went to a location to the center. I mean, it was okay when we just went out with them, I mean. And then, coming into the week, uh, what happened there? Like, what you call it, Joseph was working? So, he was off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and he had to be off Monday, Tuesday. Um, he was off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, he was off working Monday, Tuesday. Okay. And he works at night. How does he... Like manage that, you know, like with the families that sleep a lot there and there, and you know, all these guys that sleep for like a minute, you know, they got to work all night or something. Um, he doesn't know if it's all day, he probably sleeps until noon sometimes on the days that, um, so like every other week it would be like when I when I was at school coming in, and then I should be going out a little bit while later. I go, I don't go to class until about 10 or so, that way he has like two hours to sleep to get home by about 7 or but he only has about three hours of sleep before I was done with the girls. So, I'm not sure And they're not um, any, they don't have like homeschooling or nothing there, so you know, the other one was two and then four, so they're, they're not going to have a pre-day or any of that stuff. Well, I just think some of them. Like, I was helping them learn how to write a name and how to be in the world. She really didn't have much of a category because she came with us. We had half an hour, I had a lot of fun words. Going into the fitness uh, the they give us like a, I guess a timeline for us what happened. 
So on the day, um, it was my birthday. Um, no one gets to come around and say something. I was already up because I had one of my plans that day. It was a take home that day. I already gave an answer. Question two, I didn't do so many answers and I just memorized them. So um, about 10 30, I didn't show up at home. You know, and I said, hey, what's going on? Are you okay? It was my birthday and you just last minute person. I was busy, probably trying to get you something before you got home. I cannot be safe because we at home, I'll be downstairs and be involved. And I'm part of me. Um, what time did you get home? We got home last night. I can't be honest, I know that I wasn't sleeping in the office. It was before 8 or around 8 or around um, 9. I, uh, so when you went to go upstairs, I was at the room shortly after that. Um, we breakfast and a noble bar. Um, always noble water, we need noble water, interchangeably, or yogurt, which is I'm not a person. I know I know I didn't know about that one. Um uh, normally after the eat, I came back upstairs, they had the room upstairs, cleaning the room. I'm sorry. What the? How did I say it? I 
like the whole thing was out yet because she wasn't like I could see her breath. I didn't see like he seemed to where he had come back, you know, like so I was later on the floor and see my like, like you know, put thing on her chest to see if anything would like make her breathe right because it seemed like at this point I thought that like since I didn't see anything in there anymore and I saw all people coming out that either like she's not breathing because she needs help breathing or something. I don't know. I mean I just don't what all did you do here, Chuck? I uh did like the rust, um, I guess like how CPR. Um you're talking about abdominal thrust or was it up here? I mean like kind of I don't know, probably everywhere. I was just like not thinking. I mean I'm trying to do what I can do to see if she can see that breathing but at some point, like, while I have her right there in front of the sink and everything, she um, does, like, I hear a breath, I hear a gas and everything, and so, like, immediately, like, I don't know, you know, okay, something's work, something's right, she, you know, like, I can hear it, like, in the back of my mind, all I'm thinking is that something's wrong, you can hear something, that means that it's getting better, so, I grab her back up and everything and stuff, and, like, at first, I'm on top of the sink, she, um, like, I have a big water hose, the one that you can draw and everything and stuff. Yeah, so she's, you know, she's breathing, like, granted, like, she's breathing in and out, like, coming back, you know, I feel like, almost like, she's like, I mean, it's probably so good, man, I don't remember, but I grab the water hose and I look and see if there's anything not water hose, the same hose. I look in there to see if I see anything again. I don't see anything. I run a little water, make it flush out of her mouth, make sure there's any run that's in anything, and we go out. But like she's uh, bad breathing, I'm kind of like, you know, shaking a little bit, Layla, 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 I mean, like, she's breathing and, like, her eyes are open, you know what I'm saying? But she's not, like, Layla. She's not lucid. She's not, like, counting one, two, three, and, you know what I'm saying? She's not, like, normal. She's not normal, you know? So, um, but as soon as I got her breathing, and I thought that that was, like, you know, at least she's at least breathing, and it was like, you know, the better. It kind of, you know, it, I, I don't know. I had her on the sink, yeah, I her mouth and everything, and instead of she was breathing up there, and then she got her breathing her back, I got her mouth and everything, and I immediately pulled her up off the sink, I take her into the living room, I laid her on her side, the only room walking anywhere out here, because like, my phone's not right there in the kitchen, I took over the lab and talked to my head where she was, I set her down on the floor in my living room, laid her on her side, just in case there was anything else that if I, if I had a baby to get the phone, she was going to start over again. I'm upstairs, I'm in front of my bed, I call out water on my back upstairs, and I tell them, I have a two-year-old that showed me, or that choked, she's breathing now, but she doesn't look okay, I need help. Um, did you continue to do anything else after that point? Um, not at first, because they asked me if she was breathing, and I said yes. They had me lay my ear over her. Now, because he says, can, can, you, like, can you hear or see her breathing? And I was kind of confused at first about what he was asking about, but I was like, yeah, she's breathing. He's like, well, like, can you put your ear over her mouth and, like, face your head towards her chest? So you could see it, and uh, he told me every time she breathes in her mouth in the same now. So every time she says, say now. Say now. You know, like, I don't really think that this is what it was now, but it was in what it was on then, but at some point I thought, like, you know, like, she's breathing, yes, but, like, it doesn't, like, it doesn't look good, like, it looks like her breath, breath is shallow and everything, and, like, she doesn't look good, she looks white, she looks pale. Oh, my God. Um, and I mean, they had, they had direct 
directions for me. I follow their directions as best as I can. You know, everything that they were asking me to do, I was doing. I can't record with them one. I can't even record with them the only one. But they, uh, at some point, you know, I was worried that, like, she would hit on her knees and she looked like, like, her. I could see her eyes, you know, but, like, her eyes closed. But it was, like, to the where it was a tilt where I could see her eyes. And I could tell, like, her eyeballs were, like, you know, falling back. So I told him that it was a phone call. And I asked him, you know, what can I do? What can I do to help? Like, I just need help. How far are they away? I mean, like, it seems like, I know you guys probably get a whole lot of time, but it seems like they're forever away when you need them right there right now. So I uh, kept asking how far they were away, what was I going to do to help. Um, he told me how to do CPR on his phone. Um, so I, like, I follow the instructions so that I can. I think that like someone's palm over her, but then press my fingers down and then she can have, so I tried doing that. I was pushing my both fingers down. Um, I did that, and so he put my head back to the breast. Uh, he asked me to see her chest rise and fall, and I said yes. When I blow it in the breast, um, I mean, I just did that until someone got there. He asked me, you know, was my door to the house when they got there. Um, I said I didn't know. Um, he, when he finally told me that someone was there, I ran up and opened the door. He came right back to her. And he kept trying to do the repetitions and so on and so on. So was I first? The people, as far as who drove up in my car, like, or who drove up, I didn't know. Where did they do? Where, once they got there, where did you go and where did they go? Uh, they came straight in, and uh, they went right there. They picked her, well, he picked her up, and so he came in. He, um, I mean, he did this, like, put his hands underneath her, and did this on her. Um, uh, Started doing that. I was watching. Um, you know, I don't. I mean, I don't. You know, the question that I got you explain? I think so. Once they came in, did you just surrender the same thing? Well, they came in. They said, "They're they're asking, okay, she's okay. She's breathing. She's okay. You know, um, I don't know how many seconds it took before they said." Uh, then you take her outside to the ambulance, and uh, while I came on first row, I could see that the other EMT was like trying to unbag and stuff, it was like they used the flies. Uh, they didn't use these flies, I don't remember. They did this the ambulance. When they got her inside the ambulance, I, you know, ran out there behind them. They wouldn't let me in. I couldn't get on the ambulance. I asked them to the ambulance, they couldn't get on the ambulance. I, um, I to the police officer and asked him about it. Was she okay? Is she breathing? He said, I don't know. I don't know. I only know what to do. So they tried for her to switch uh, facilities. And then you said you couldn't go with them, do you go by far away? Yeah, they told me I couldn't get on the ambulance because I had no assistance for it. So they told me to turn on the ambulance. So I ran inside, the officer comes in with me. He was like trying to calm me down and everything and stuff. And told me, like, you know, if the ambulance is run out, we'll just hop in your car and leave. Like, you know, like, time to do life. So all these random things that I didn't give a crap about. But, so, did you drive yourself to the... Yes, I drove me and... Um, how did your, your husband find out about... Um, so, I... Before, like, the officer, like, you know, like, being my driver's license and everything, stuff like that, and before I back on my 
not live like a common flight, which is the case worker. And tell her that I her to be there. And I'll have a father of the job and tell them to have to call me as soon as possible. So. He called you like you wanted to go to the Yes. All right. When what she said, uh, obviously you described how she wasn't normal during this event, once you started seeing her in distress and all that. Prior to that, did she appear normal in her demeanor and any other physical attributes about it, no health issues or nothing like that, early in the day or preceding day or something like that? No, when she had been sick.
oh, maybe you should put sunscreen on there. That will help with flat on the next time. But she had like a little more from the time that that was down there. I mean, uh, we had dogs who played with them and pushed them down. We had like. Not dogs in the household? Yeah. They're two weeks. They're small dogs. Okay. And we had to turn them in like their shot records and everything when we went to meet them. We had to turn all that stuff over. So. Well, going back to the gym stuff, what, what gym did you guys use the, uh, gym, the gymnastics? Gym tech for kids. Gym tech for kids. All right. All right, so you said that the, the oldest child uh, went into gym tech first? Yes. All right. Do you remember when that was? Um, I don't know. I can't remember. I think of All right. And then, now, how soon thereafter, you know, about like, was it a few weeks or a few days before you said you tried to grow? Later? Later. Okay. You know how long that was? I really started first. I'm thinking she started to end up office when she did a free trial, not a hundred percent. Because you do like a free trial first. And then you do a free trial. No, you did it. Yes. Well, it's Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, did she have a coach or anything? Yes. Who was the male coach? Michaela. Okay. And she was the one who we had done the free trial with in the classes that we were signing up for, which was Michaela. The only reason why we didn't get her to sign up was because in the meantime, all we were going to do that today was a month left. So we were going to find it out and go out and share a cap Now you, you were saying that uh, prior to her enrolling, she was already like favoring the other way, like it was, you could tell something was wrong with it prior to that? That weekend, yes. Okay. Well, do you know what happened after that? Um, I think that weekend, Michaela was the only one who had been able to sign up. I think she was the only one who had been able to sign up for the free trial. Okay. Because she was the only when we have them outside, we have the windows open, the blind room, and we get the door open, we have a baby gate that we set up there, we keep eye on, eye and ear out, and everything and stuff like that. But like, when she did, and when she fell outside, like, I don't know, like, originally, Millie had told me, oh, this is the thing, try to go on, Millie had called me, and like, originally you would ask Millie, and she said, oh, I think she fell in the end of or I think she fell from her knee, and she, you rely on her, and then, like, I was waiting to see if it was going to be like, was it something she was walking by on Saturday? Was it a store? Was it tender? What was it? If it wasn't something on Monday. And uh, Layla, could you like verbalize to you um, what, what happened to you? Did you, did you ask her? Well, yeah, you would ask her. Um, the only thing she could tell you was if something hurt. She doesn't like. Tell you how? No, she didn't tell you like how something happened. Is there anything outside that would uh, that she could have?
the down and shelf to the nurse to the ER. After her night out, I had her with Elena. She was like, hey, yeah, let's call Chilla, let's make sure. She calls Chilla, we describe everything we see, all the symptoms, everything we can get. And uh, they like, went through everything and they said, no, we should be able to bring her in from the ACU and make sure you give her some type of like, hand with the medicine and then some kind of fun. Those were like the big things that happened while she was there. Like, I mean, I don't know what that does to my like, It's not day one to try every single thing that's ever happened. I mean, she like, kind of walked off her train, you know, and she jumped on her bed and bumped her head. She's a kid, you know? Like, I'm not an expert. I don't like. Well, she was like, I'm not an
خیلی نظیر حاله هست Ladies and gentlemen, that's where we're going to break for tonight. Uh, we'll see you all back here tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, thank you for your time and attention today. some of the comments here at the end of the uh, transcript. Let's see one that's probably a concern. Uh, if I, can, I might be able to make, it, uh, make this a little bit better. Um, well, I think we're fine with the, the fact that it was from a firm. I think the attorney client privilege itself as a legal matter was, was waived by them being in the room. Um, I think there's case law support that, that I've been able to do in the past hour. But I also just don't think it's worth the error. So I'm not going to talk about it. Yeah, because it's, it's neat. It's the ineffective assistance of counsel issue that that arises in there, not with them, but there that I have some uncertainty. And, and I agree. I, I, you can see an argument. I don't think it's worth the error, so I think it's probably best to just, just drop it. Okay, so that's where we'll stop the, the, the tape. Thank you. There is actually another portion when they do go back in, they talk for another couple minutes. Um, um, perhaps Mr. Bob. We can discuss that, but I, I think that um, I, that that part was not. Um, they do continue to talk about the facts for a couple more minutes, and then um, they leave again. So I think that section um, would be admissible. As small as you guys are. I I agree. I think